Hello, I'm Tim Jones. I'm the technical manager here at Photospeed. And today what we're going to be doing is talking through how to pick the right paper and what to look for when you're picking a paper for your black and white images. Now, I've got three tips that I'm going to be talking about or three things to look for, should we say, when you're looking for the right paper to choose for your pictures. The first one of those is matte or gloss or luster. Now the second one of those is, should I go for a textured paper, a smooth paper, something with a little bit of texture in there? And we're gonna have a look at what we can look at and a few little rules as well we, need, we can follow. Now the last one of those is looking at the tone of the image and to see what's going on in there. Do we have a lot of contrast going on in there? Is it very black or white with very little gray? Or is there a lovely gray gradient going through that we can use and we can enhance by paper choice? Okay, so let's start by looking at, should I choose a matte paper or a gloss luster? etc kind of paper. So I've got some prints here that I've printed off on our Platinum Gloss Art Fibre paper which is a more of kind of a semi-gloss or what I call kind of a darkroom gloss that feels like that fibre based paper we used to use in the darkrooms. And I've also printed one off on our smooth cotton paper as well. Now these two next to each other we can definitely see a difference going on. So on the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre we have this kind of a deeper black here i would say because it's, it's going to pop a little bit more because it's on the platinum gloss art fiber now on the matte paper here we can see we don't get as much reflection which is fantastic now when we look at it on its own it looks really nice we've got this deep black here but it is a different kind of black we've got. We haven't got this glossy kind of black that we have on this Platinum Gloss Art Fibre here. Now with this particular image, there is quite a lot of contrast in it. I'll bring it up on screen so you can see. Now for me, this comes down to the tone of the image. So if there's quite a lot of contrast in here, so it's quite a punchy image, should we say, then I would probably go towards a higher white point of paper and you can see at the top here the smooth cotton is quite a little bit warmer than the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber. So for a contrasty image or a, a higher kind of tone balance of the image where we've got a bit more white in there than grey, the whiter point of paper is really going to help us. Also because we've got a bit more contrast going on in this image, the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber or the lusters and the pearls that we do as well will help this image a little bit better more. It will just bring things out a little bit more. So my general rule is if it's kind of a little bit more punchy image, a little less gray in there, more black and white with very little kind of gray tone in between, I would probably go towards a higher white point of paper and also more of a semi-gloss feel as well. I wouldn't so much go towards the mattes in there. Now in contrast to that, I've printed off another picture of a dancer here. Now as you can see, this picture is a little bit kind of softer in tone. So it really suits a matte paper really quite nicely. If I just bring in the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre here, for me, and again, this is paper choice. It's such a personal kind of, it's such a personal choice as well. So for me, this image doesn't really work on the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre. It's almost too much. It's kind of, it's bringing out too much detail. It's making it really kind of um, a bit, almost almost a little bit blotchy to be honest. Because I think this, this image was shot on film. So there's quite a bit of grain going on in here. But also there isn't really a true black in here as well. And I think that is enhanced by the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre. So it almost looks a little bit wishy-washy. Whereas on the matte paper, now because we haven't got that true black in there, it doesn't really matter. So we can kind of get away with that. And also it just brings the image down a little bit more in a really good way, not in a negative way. So it really enhances the image. And I think it really suits 
this kind of scene, shall we say. So a matte paper works really well on subdued tones of images, so a more subdued palette of greys. And we have a black in there and we have a white in there, but it's more gradual, that gradient. So matte papers work really well for that. Okay, so let's look at some paper textures and to see how we can use papers and textured papers to really enhance our pictures. Now, the texture in a paper can be very subtle, like the difference between a brighter print and a platinum gloss art fiber print, whereas brighter is a very smooth paper, like a pearl kind of finish, whereas the platinum gloss art fiber has that tiny little bit of texture in there that can just bring out the print. I have to say, if I was going to pick between the two, I'd always go for the platinum gloss art fiber personally, and that's my personal kind of choice. Now, the brighter is a fabulous paper, and I do use it quite a lot, but my go-to, I would say, is the platinum gloss art fiber, just because it's that, just a little bit higher white point, and also it just feels like that dark room paper for me. That's the only reason. Now I've got some matte papers here. This is where textures can really kind of come into their own. So I've got a picture here printed on the cotton etching, a portrait picture. Now I've done this for a reason, printed a portrait on here, because one of my rules is generally not to print a portrait image on a textured paper. Now this is because just in this detail here around by the face and in the shoulder here, the skin has started to look quite mottled and kind of blotchy. So it's not very flattering um, on a textured paper. Now the other paper I've printed this on is a platinum matte, which is a very smooth high white point type paper. So it really suits the image, but the skin is a lot smoother and it has also helped us kind of smooth the skin out a little bit. So we don't really need to do any heavy retouching. The paper can do that for us a little bit, just smoothing things out for us. Whereas a textured paper will kind of enhance those imperfections for us or add more in, to be honest. It has added in the shoulder here. It's nice and smooth on the platinum mat here, but it's added a lot of texture in there and just looks a little bit kind of rough shall we say now saying that i've printed kind of wedding pictures and things on say a platinum etching type paper which is a very subtle type of texture in there works really well for kind of wedding dresses and things like that it doesn't really overpower the skin tones in the pictures. Now textured papers are fantastic for other uses as well and we're going to look at a forest scene now and this is where textured papers can really help to en enhance that. Okay so let's have a look at this forest picture. Now this is the forest scene I was talking about and you can see actually in the areas with the leaves and the bracken and the dead leaves on the floor, the forest floor here, the way the texture has almost worked with the image and they've almost become one, putting in equal amounts into the image. So we can't really notice the texture of the paper in here as well, which is what we want. So that means they're working together to just enhance that. So it works really well for this type of picture, like a textured type of paper that's quite busy and a lot going on in there. The other thing textured papers are really good at, I have to say, is wildlife pictures like this one here. So when they're quite close up, you've got a lovely depth of field in here. Now what the texture does, I found, is it enhances the fur areas and the sharp parts of the picture. So it works really well in, in kind of the fox's body here and kind of just really makes it stand out. Now the depth of field, the texture again, just softens that down almost and just kind of enhances that depth of field. Again, working together, side by side almost, the texture and the image. It's really starting to enhance things. Now I'm quite a big fan of using textured papers for wildlife for this very reason, that it enhances the furs or the feathers, etc., on on the animal. Especially if it's quite close up like this one is and it's got that depth of field in there as well. So there's a couple of examples of how textured papers can really start to work together and something to think about when you're choosing a paper and you could think, well, I've got this really nice heavy paper, I don't really know what to try with it. 
try a wildlife picture or try one of your landscapes in it as well and just see how they work together. So we've looked at two of my points. So we've looked at paper choice, be it matte or gloss or luster papers, and we've looked at texture of paper as well. Now, what I wanna do is just talk about the tone of the image again. So I've talked about this briefly when we're thinking about matte papers and gloss and luster papers. Now, when I'm talking about the tone of the image, what I'm talking about mainly is the contrast. So is it a strong or high contrast image, quite high key, very black and very white? Or is there lots of greys in there? So we've got a lovely gradient of colour. If we go back to those two pictures of the dancers, the first picture was a very quite high key kind of very strong contrast we've got a very deep black in there and we've also got the very high white whereas with the other picture which is quite grainy um, the black was very subdued in there as well very quite almost I want to say muddy but it's not really it kind of a, a nice kind of look to it as well whereas that would suit a matte kind of paper now another thing we need to think about is the white point of the paper as well when we're thinking about the tone of the image. General rule is if the, if you've got a lot of contrast in the image, so there's a lot of punch to the image, then you will need a higher white point of paper. Something with a whiter base will work really well. So if we pick between the brighter paper and the platinum gloss art fibre papers, the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre has a slightly, very slightly higher white point. The brighter is absolutely fantastic and it is still a white paper, but it's just a tiny little bit warmer when compared to the Platinum Gloss Art Fibre. If you looked at them on their own, they both seem really white. Now, the Legacy paper we have, the Legacy Gloss, now this has a certain warmth to the paper as well, which lends itself very nicely to pictures that have a really good range of gray in there from black to white, everything in between. Works really well, but it is quite a warm paper. So it reminds me of the old dark green papers of kind of the Ilford warm tone kind of paper. So you do have to be quite careful on what you use it on and what subjects. Really good for um, like forest pictures and landscapes and things like that. It looks fantastic in that. Okay, well, I hope that's been useful. And I hope that's been useful to kind of talk through my thought process when I'm choosing paper types and what I look for when I'm printing black and white images and printing them on to certain papers as well. This is my kind of thought process and other people may have other ideas around paper choice and certain rules they put in place and things like that. There's, there's no right or wrong answer with this. Paper choice is such a personal part of photography that there's no real right or wrong. It's almost the same as someone producing uh, pictures shot on a Canon and one shot on a Nikon. They both produce amazing pictures and are just fabulous. But for that person, they just like the feel and the way that camera works, the Canon camera works over the Nikon camera or the Sony camera. Same with paper choice. When you're printing your image, you may like it on a really nice high gloss picture. But someone else might go, oh, actually, oh, that would look really nice on a mat. And that is, I think that's the most wonderful thing about photography, that it never gets boring because everyone's different and we all have a different view on it as well. And I think that's what makes it such an amazing kind of vocation, shall we say. Okay. Any questions, as always, just drop me an email or give us a call at Photospeed. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And also click the bell to get your notifications of when videos are dropping as well. So I really look forward to seeing some amazing prints um, and I will catch you all next time. Bye bye.